Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to give a quick look at my homepage. I did get a request to kind of walk through it a little bit deeper than I did in one of my other videos. So I'm, here I am, I'm, that's what I'm going to do in this particular video right now. So let's go ahead and get started. Now one of the questions that were, was asked was uh, which plugins do I use to get the home page set up here? Now, you know, if you don't want to use any plugins, you technically could just create a page, pin it, call it home or whatever you want to for the for that designation and then go ahead and create content. And once you pin it, you know, it'll it should stay here all the time unless you unpin it. And you, but you will not get the you know, the image that I have up top and the icon that comes with one of the plugins that I have installed, but you could manually add an image in there and do some other things. Um, but I'll, I'll walk you through the plugins that I'm using, but I just want to point out that you don't really need any plugins just to get the basic home page up. Other than if you want to do some of the queries that I'm doing here, you, you have to have data view. So the data view plugin is required if you're going to do any of these particular queries that I have. And one of them I have is to look for the today's daily note or your daily journal. And when you come in here, I, you can see here, I just have a data view query and it does a list and it's from the calendar folder where it contains a file where the date format is of today. And then I use the format of, of my, um, my daily notes, how they get created. Now, if you use a different format, you just customize that to whatever you use. Then I also have uh, a section here that will show any Excaladraw boards that I use. I tried to do this with canvases as well, but DataView does not support canvases. So if we come over here and we create a DataView page here, and then we go back to our home, we can see that data view finds that that one Excaladraw um, document that was just created and it gives you the name here. So if we go into the query, again, this is just a list from my notes folder and I have it set up right now to, to look in my Canvas resource folder and also in my Excaladraw resource folder. Now, when I create uh, either Canvas or Excaladraw, I have it go to a specific folder. If you do not have this, then you might have to try a different method where it just looks for the file format uh, with the extension for Excaladraw. In this case, I kept it simple to where any, you know, some of these different document types, I just add them as a, as a resource and I create a, a, you know, a dedicated folder for those to go into. And then I look for where the created time uh, is greater than today. So that's simple for that one there. And then I have another one for incomplete tasks. So this particular data query, data view query here, so maybe a little bit more uh, complex than the other ones, but this looks for the tasks that are within my vault where they're not complete and they contain a, a tag. Um, also, it has to, it excludes the ones that are scheduled. So, or has this greater than scheduled um, text in the line. This here is put in there automatically. If I put a certain tag on the task itself, then I have a process that runs that will uh, send it to either TickTick, which is the, the main task manager that I'm using right now. Um, but I also have, a, have the process send it to uh, ClickUp or Todoist, depending on um, if I want to send it to those different task management solutions. So this one here will find any, any of the incomplete um, tasks that I have that are not checked or marked as completed that have a tag on it. So if I come in here and let's go to one of these notes here and what I'll do is I'll create a task in my test 
And then let's just do it without the tag and we'll see that it does not show up in this list. And then let's put a tag on it and I'll just put a tag in there. Hashtag um, task. We'll do this one. And actually I'm going to do uh, two of them here. My task two. And what I want to do is show both of those. So one shows up in this list. I'll go ahead and I'll mark that as complete. We'll see how it disappears there. And then if I was to come here and let's put in here tick tick. And let's give it that particular task. We should see that it'll show up in this list. Um, but shortly here, um, once my process hits it, it will actually mark it as complete and then it will um, set it up to where it has that that dollar that greater than sign and then scheduled so it will exclude it on both accounts one that is completed and also because it has that that last piece at the end of it And we can see here that it went ahead and marked the, that process kicked in and then it, um, it marked it as complete. And then it also put in this uh, sent to tick tick actually. And this just notes that I did actually change um, this process here because I want to identify exactly where I was sending it to. But we can show here that in data view it is missing or is not showing up in that list again. Then I have any active projects in this particular data view. It is another list from a specific folder underneath projects where it has a tag of project underscore active. So all of those will show up here. So anything that's not active um, or that's on hold or anything like that won't show up. Only the ones with the tag that they're active will show here. And then I have a basically a you know, a map of content or right here where I just have a list of links out to other documents that I may want to get to fairly quickly. Now the plugin that provides the, the homepage portion of it that automatically makes this a homepage and it pins it and um, it kind of opens it up automatically as a page. If you close it, it will reopen itself if you um, close the app and reopen the app. So let's go into the plugins area here and we'll see that it is just called home page. So that's fairly easy to remember. And if we go into the settings, the settings are pretty straightforward too. You come in here and you can uh, pick, a, pick a file in here. You can, you have a, a few different options where you can pick a graph view, a random file, nothing, or a daily note. So you can kind of change this up depending on what you want to be your home page. Me, I have it as home just um, as kind of a one-stop shop to get to certain things that I, I deem as important. So you can basically set this up however you want to and customize it to your needs. Now I do have it set up so that on startup, it will open up this home page. Open when empty. So when there are no tabs open, it will open up this home page so that there is always basically a tab that's open. It says um, use when opening normal. So if I was to open this page uh, just from the file explorer, it will take on the same properties that I have set up in here. And then you can have a separate home page for mobile. I do not on this one here. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom, we get some a few more options where for the most part, I have the defaults where the open method kept as the default, the manual open method is default. I have pen checked here, hide the release notes um, by default is off. So I left it off and auto create. I think this is automatically or by default, this is turned on. I turned it off just so I don't have any conflicts um, that, that may occur and it screws things up for me. So I turned that one off and uh, at the bottom here, the open view, you can customize how that home page opens, whether it's in read view only, 
um, which might suit your needs um, for what you're doing, or you put it in source mode or live preview mode, whichever one of those options you want to do there. And then revert view on close. So when navigating away from the home page, restore the default view. So if you do change what the view is from say live view to um, to uh, reading view mode, it'll change everything back to what you you have set up in here. And then you have some other options in here where you can auto scroll to the bottom of the page. So say if you chose your daily note, um, to be your home page here. Maybe you want it to go all the way to the bottom of the page um, so that you can start uh, journaling or doing whatever you want to within that daily note. And then there's the option here to refresh the data view um, queries that you have in there. So the, this is what I have set up for the home page. And the the next thing that gives me the the ability to do the background or this this um, banner at the top here with the icon and have these, you know, certain properties show up where I can collapse them. This comes from the make.md plugin. So this one here is more of a, I would say it's more of a, a, a fatter plugin where it does a lot of things to the uh, user experience of the entire application. It's not just specific to your home page. So if you want to, again, get, make it easy to have the banner and put those icons and some things like that, you can use this plugin to be able to do that. For the most part, that's really all I use it for. Um, I thought I would use spaces more than I, uh, than I really do, but in actuality, I think um, having the the banner up top and then using the icons for the different files is really the the main reason why I use this plugin. So I came in here and I turned a bunch of stuff off um, that I did not need. So when you come in here to this plugin, just set it up and then start turning things, toggling things on and off that you may you may want to have in here or you may not want. It's pretty customizable. All right, so this is just a quick video, kind of give a, a little rundown here of the way I have my homepage set up. It's not that complicated. I try to keep things simple. So yeah, yeah, take it, do whatever you want with you know your homepage that that helps you be more productive. If you like the content in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.